Hello, and welcome to the start of a remarkable story. In fact, the word remarkable is hardly adequate. It's almost impossible to reach for a description to describe the scale of the information that you're going to see and hear in the next uh, four hours or so. Imagine, for instance, that despite what we're led to believe, there is no such thing as a random accident, a random incident, a random anything. That everything happens because it is meant to happen. On a spiritual level, how we create our own reality and what we blame other people for, we're actually creating. And in the second part of this video, in the second video, we're going to look in detail at how that happens because now, as the veil lifts in the last few years of the 20th century and we move into the 21st, we now scientifically be able, being able to uh, confirm that these things are true. And then there's another level of what you're going to hear in the next four hours, which I'm going to really start with. And that's another version of there's no such thing as a random accident or a random incident. It's a story that reveals that not just now, not just in the modern world, but back thousands and thousands of years, a tiny, tiny few people, indeed interbreeding genetic bloodlines, have controlled, entered the positions of power and have orchestrated what we call history so that wherever you look increasingly as we've created the technology to become a global society increasingly this tiny little clique the tribe or the brotherhood as I call them have been able to orchestrate the major events and therefore the direction of the world on a global scale and a scale that beggars belief what I've already said is staggering to the perception of life that most people have, that we're encouraged to have, that we are programmed to have. And I feel, I feel a bit like, uh, like the cow who walks in the field and you've got the herd of cows in the field there and they're munching away and their reality is that every now and again the big truck comes and it takes a few of them away and wherever they think they go, I don't know, another field, on holiday, whatever. And then this other cow comes into the field and says, hey, hey, you, you got to listen or you, you, you won't believe what I've just found out. You, you know when they put them, oh, those cows and some of us in that, in that truck and they take us away every, every now and again, um, they're not taking us to another field or on vacation. Uh, what they do is they take you down to this, this big building and they slit their throats and they bleed them dry and then they cut them up and they hang them on hooks and then they put them in little packages and, and put it in the supermarket and then them humans come along and buy us and eat us. What would be the reaction of the rest of the herd on hearing this information? You're crazy, man. You're out of your brain. You want to go and see a psychiatrist? They'd never do that. This is ridiculous. And anyway, I've got shares in that trucking company and I get, get a good return. Shut up, you're making waves. And yet, all the things that I have just said are absolutely true. It's just that the herd will not believe them. And what's happening now as we unfold across the millennium and beyond and the perception of life dramatically changes. What in the past would have been considered ridiculous, extreme, a nonsense is increasingly through documented evidence, not from some theory, being confirmed as true. A very, very few people run this planet and control your life. And yet you have the power to control your life. You just give it away. And that's the point. When, when I talk about a, a few people running the world, um, understandably, people come back and they say, well, it's not possible, mate. Can't be done. Too many people. And it can't be done by physical means, by soldiers at the door and soldiers in the street. You can do that 
in a small area, but you cannot control billions of people physically, just like you can't control a herd of sheep or a herd of pigs physically if they don't want to be controlled. In England, uh, a little while ago, we had a remarkable example of that, in the sense that uh, two pigs um, actually escaped from a slaughterhouse. They were just about to go through all that stuff I've just been talking about. And they got away. What they said was, <laughs> instead of just following the herd and just accepting that that's what you do, they thought for themselves, they expressed their uniqueness, they broke out of the herd. And they ran away. And this became a major national news story, day after day after day, because all these different people and agencies were dispatched to, to catch the two pigs, and they couldn't catch them for days and days and days, because they were trying to catch them physically. And because those pigs expressed their uniqueness, far from going to the slaughterhouse, they became national celebrities and are now wheeled out at galas and fates and, and other events as one of the star attractions. Sh shows what you can do when you express your uniqueness instead of following the herd. The point I'm making here, however, is that you can't control lots of people physically, but you don't have to. What you do is you manipulate the way they think and the way they feel, so they behave in the way you want them to. Mind and emotional manipulation. Uh, summed up and symbolized uh, by this. We are multidimensional infinity. We're not just a, a physical body. As we'll come to in the second of these two videos, we are everything that exists. But how much of everything that exists, the eternal consciousness, are we accessing? Infinity or just a fraction? And the difference between that infinity perception of life and possibility and that is simply, again, beyond words to describe. So the idea has been, over thousands of years of this manipulation, to turn unique aspects of infinity into a tiny, tiny eggshell of consciousness with a tiny, tiny perception of its own potential to control its own destiny. And once you do that, you create the herd mentality. And the herd mentality uh, can be summed up by what we see all the time um, in a herd or a flock, whatever you want to call it, of sheep. If you look at how uh, sheep are controlled all over the planet every day, it's through this. It's because sheep are put in that symbolic eggshell so that they don't think for themselves, they just follow the one in front. So, most of the sheep every day, and I've seen it, remarkable sight it is, where the farmer arrives with the sheepdog, and there's this whole kind of group of sheep, hundreds of them in the example that I saw once in England. And they're all munching away and no problem. And then suddenly, when the farmer arrives, one or two of them start to walk. Just one or two. Ba, 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 ba. And it's like flipping Exodus. Hundreds of them just follow the one in front without thinking. No, well, do I want to follow the one in front? You know, what do I feel today? Maybe I want to go over there. No, no, ba, 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 ba. And then you've got the tiny few who don't immediately succumb to that and follow that and concede their uniqueness to that and they're given the extra dose of fear by the sheepdog wrote 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 oh all right then and that four letter word fear is what controls the world fear fear the manipulation of fear so what you have are two states of being that get hundreds of sheep exactly where the farmer and the sheepdog want every day and those two states of being are ba 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 and fear.